Wisdom. Prudentia. Justice. Justicia. Temperance. Temperantia. Courage. Fortitudo. Applying ancient philosophy to modern life, this is the Sunday Stoic. Welcome to the Sunday Stoic Podcast. This is Steve coming to you from my stoa in Conway, Arkansas. Thank you to my patrons for making this show possible, uh, including uh, Ramses, who is uh, my newest patron. You can check out Patreon and support the show at www.patreon.com slash Sunday Stoic. Occasionally invite my patrons to participate in uh, show discussions, uh, ask them for questions for guests and things like that, and and have them suggest topics. And we are about to start a a Stoic book discussion with patrons online, so you can check that out uh, as a patron. I also think it's pretty cool that several folks that live not too far from me are thinking of getting together and creating a Stoic meetup here in Arkansas. So if anyone lives anywhere near here, uh, especially the Conway or Little Rock area, and, uh, you know, that could be Hot Springs even further out from there, but if anyone wants to get together, uh, get a hold of me, sundaystoic at gmail.com, uh, or join our Facebook group called Arkansas Stoics, and we can uh, uh, try to put something together eventually here. This week, I thought we'd uh, step out of the normal big three of the Stoics, you know, Seneca, Marcus Aurelius, and Epictetus, and look uh, back at Cleanthes. Uh, We don't have a lot of Cleanthes to read from, but one big chunk uh, does exist, and it's called the Hymn to Zeus. It's it's a uh, a prayer to Zeus essentially, and I won't lie. A lot of the translations I find are almost impossible to read, so I went through and I paraphrased the Hymn to Zeus. Most glorious of immortals, called by many names, O sovereign king, Zeus, ruler of nature, you govern all things with universal law. Hail to you, for it is right that mortals should address you. For we are your offspring, we are the only creatures on earth to speak. Therefore I will sing hymns to you forever. The whole cosmos which circles the earth obeys you, for such power is contained in your hands the two-edged thunderbolt. Under its blow all nature shudders. You are the guide of universal reason which mingles with the greater and lesser lights, which has grown to become ruler over all. Nothing occurs apart from you, O Lord, not on earth, nor in the cosmos, nor beneath the ocean, except that which is done through lack of wisdom. You can make the rough smooth and bring order from chaos. To you the ugly seems beautiful. You have fitted things together, good and evil, into one world, guided by reason. This reason mortal men ignore at their own peril. While they long to obtain something good, they do not know God's universal law. But if they would only listen and obey, they would live well in harmony with reason. Instead, they rush past each other on diverse paths, some seeking fame, others strife, some wealth, others seek pleasures of the body, Each is self-deceived, working on their own destruction. But you, great Zeus, maker of all, who lives in the clouds, lord of thunder, save men from their unhappy ignorance, scatter it from our souls, and give us the same wisdom that you yourself rely upon. And we in return will praise your works unceasingly, as there is no higher office for man or God, than to praise universal reason. So who are we praying to here? Well, we start off by saying, O the most glorious of immortals, the sovereign king, Zeus, but it also mentions called by many names. So there's this one, I guess we could call him the primary god of the pantheon here, who is the spirit of nature called by Many names, but uh, they call him uh, Zeus. And we start off with a simple 
kind of a typical prayer, singing praise to to them and all of that good stuff like you would hear in any kind of prayer. Um, I find it interesting that the uh, the cosmos obeys this God um, and we're reminded of their power by the occasional thunderbolt. Uh, kind of a reminder of their heavenly authority, I guess. Um, what I find even more interesting then is then as the prayer goes on, is uh, what kind of God this is and what kind of prayers are offered. Um, This is not the God that you pray to to win the football game or the God you pray to to uh, cure your uh, cancer, uh, that sort of thing. This is a God who set up the universe in a certain reasonable way, putting reason at its head, um, giving you the power to overcome the problems yourself. Not that you may find a cure for yourself, but to bear it with as much dignity as a human can muster, rather than hoping for uh, a miracle. This is not exactly a God of miracles, but once again a God of reason. And so rather than praying for humanity to uh, be wealthy and rich and someone to be famous and everyone to live in peace and unity and etc. The prayer is for all humanity to stop rushing past one another on different paths trying to seek their own little amb- ambitious fortunes. Instead, that we uh, unite, as it were, uh, though it doesn't say that exactly, but uh, you know, to, uh, unite in the sense that we follow reason, we seek the laws of nature, the laws of Zeus, the laws of God, and uh, use that wisdom uh, to to, uh, live in harmony with nature. But I do like that statement. They rush past each other on diverse paths, some seeking fame, others strife, others wealth, others pleasures of the body, each self-deceived, seeking, uh, working on their own destruction. It's like we're all on these different paths, and we're so busy looking at our feet that we don't notice there's a cliff up ahead. We're so busy with our own little problems, with our own little bits of ambition, that we don't realize the path runs right off the edge of the mountain. But when we look up to the heavens and realize we are part of this amazing universe, maybe it's uh, built by Zeus, maybe it's just the cosmos as it is, however you wish to picture it, we are part of this amazing cosmos. We are hum- humans. We share a species. We share the ability to reason. And we can do better than we are doing now. Something to think about. Something to strive for. Whether you be a praying person or not, read through this prayer. There are many translations online. I'll put my own little paraphrase version up on uh, my Patreon page as well. I hope you have a great week. Seize the day, carpe diem. Remember, we have work to do. We can't just uh, look at our feet and follow our own ambitious paths. We must look up, help our neighbor, and seize the day. Carpe diem. Thank you for listening to The Sunday Stoic. If you enjoyed the show, please subscribe, rate, and review The Sunday Stoic on iTunes. Become a member of the Sunday Stoic team, earn rewards, and be an integral part of the show by becoming a patron at www.patreon.com slash sundaystoic. Contact the show by emailing sundaystoic at gmail.com or by leaving a voicemail at 501-503-3132. To find out more, visit www.sundaystoicpodcast.com. And as Steve always says, carpe diem. (laughs) 